You have undoubtedly heard the expression H2O, and probably CO2. You might have even heard of CH4 or O2. These are molecules. But what even is a molecule? How are they put together? Why is it H2O and not O2H? A molecule is a group of atoms that are bonded together. This means they're put together in a particular arrangement with a specific number of atoms of each element. Water is probably the most famous molecule of all time, H2O. When you say H2O, you are speaking the molecular formula for the water molecule. It has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, and they are bonded together. But exactly how is a molecule of water built? How are those two hydrogen atoms and the one oxygen atom bonded together? Can we find out the structures of other molecules? And that brings us to the goal of this video. After watching this video, you should be able to predict how a molecule's atoms are arranged by interpreting its molecular formula. Let's start with water, our most famous molecule. Its molecular formula is H2O. This means that water has two hydrogens and one oxygen, which are all bonded together. And here is the molecular structure for water. Notice that each hydrogen is connected to the oxygen with one bond. Oxygen is here in the middle, and it has two bonds. For each molecule we explore, we will also show you a three-dimensional model that we built using a molecular modeling kit. This is the three-dimensional model for water. Let's move on to carbon dioxide. Its molecular formula is CO2. It has one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. And CO2's molecular formula is shown here. Notice this weird bond. This is called a double bond. In this case, each oxygen atom forms two bonds. And if you count all the bonds that the carbon has, you will find four bonds. Here's carbon dioxide as a 3D model. Let's look at oxygen gas, a very simple molecule. Its molecular formula is O2. In oxygen gas, there are two oxygen atoms and each is bonded to the other. Here is its structure. Now, there's something a little odd here. Notice that there's a total of only two bonds. Remember, this is called a double bond. Yet, each oxygen shares those bonds. That means that this oxygen has two bonds, and this one has two bonds. The bonds are simply shared between the two oxygens. Each oxygen would be said to have two bonds. Now, let's consider nitrogen gas. Like oxygen, the formula for nitrogen gas contains two of the same atom, two nitrogens bonded together. Here is its molecular structure. Here we see another example in which there are multiple bonds between a pair of atoms. This is called a triple bond because there are three bonds between the atoms. It would be said that each nitrogen is bonded three times. Let's look at methane. Its molecular formula is CH4. It has one carbon bonded to four hydrogens. This is the molecular structure for methane. The carbon sits at the center and has four bonds. Each hydrogen has exactly one bond. Finally, let's look at ammonia. Its molecular formula is NH3. Ammonia has one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. And here is its molecular structure. The nitrogen atom sits at the center with the three hydrogen atoms bonded to it, each with one bond. Now that we have explored the structures for each of these molecules, let's identify some patterns, trends, or rules for how the atoms in molecules tend to arrange themselves. Look carefully at the molecular formula for each molecule. 
what patterns, trends, or rules can you come up with for how different atoms bond? Take a moment to pause the video and come up with some ideas about how the atoms and molecules tend to be arranged. How do hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen each behave? Now that you've taken a moment to look for any patterns, let's summarize them in a table. We can start with hydrogen. What do you notice about hydrogen and how it bonds with other atoms? If you look carefully, you'll see that in every molecule that features hydrogen, the hydrogen has exactly one bond between it and the other atom. We find no exceptions to this rule, so we can safely conclude that hydrogen will always have exactly one bond. This also means that hydrogen cannot form multiple bonds, such as those double and triple bonds we saw earlier. What about oxygen? What rules does an oxygen atom seem to follow? If you look closely, you'll find that all oxygen atoms bond twice. Sometimes the bonds form individually as separate single bonds between two atoms. Other times, the oxygen bonds form as a double bond between the oxygen and one other atom. This means that oxygen may form two single bonds or one double bond. Either way, two bonds total. Now let's look at nitrogen and see how it behaves. Do you spot any rules based on the examples we have? In ammonia, nitrogen is bonded three times, one bond for each hydrogen. In nitrogen gas, we find a triple bond, again, three bonds. So we can conclude that nitrogen will always form three bonds total, and it is possible for nitrogen to form multiple bonds. Finally, let's look at molecules containing carbon. Do you identify any trends that carbon seems to follow? It looks like carbon tends to form four bonds. In methane, carbon bonds to four hydrogen atoms. In the case of carbon dioxide, carbon forms two double bonds. That means that the carbon is also bonded four times. So in all cases we see, carbon will bond four times and multiple bonds are possible. To summarize, it appears that hydrogen can form one bond, oxygen can form two bonds, nitrogen forms three bonds, and carbon forms four bonds. It also seems that if an atom can form two or more bonds, it is possible for that atom to form those weird multiple bonds, such as double or triple bonds. These rules are pretty much always true. There's no exceptions to these rules that we need to worry about in the scope of this video. Now that we know the rules by which these atoms bond, let's get some practice in predicting the structures of molecules by looking at their formulas. To help you practice, you may want to grab something to write with so you can draw the molecules. Be aware that it may take you a few minutes to solve a single structure. There may be a bit of trial and error, so be sure to pause the video between each problem so you have time to work it out. Let's start with H2, hydrogen gas. This one is kind of easy to get you started. Pause the video and see if you can figure out how H2 forms based on our bonding rules. H2 is built like this. There is one bond shared between each hydrogen, meaning that each hydrogen has one bond. Here's its 3D structure. Pretty simple. Together, this little pair satisfies our bonding rules for hydrogen. This is the molecular formula for what is called methanol, COH4. Can you find out how a molecule of methanol is arranged? Pause the video and see if you can determine how this molecule is put together. Methanol is built like this. Notice that this molecule obeys our bonding rules. Each hydrogen has one bond, oxygen has two bonds, and carbon is bonded four times. This next example is called ethane, C2H6. It has two carbons and two hydrogens. Pause the video and see if you can solve this molecular structure. Ethane is built like this. As usual, each hydrogen has one bond. And also as usual, both carbon atoms are bonded four times. 
This next molecule is called ethylene, C2H4. It has two carbons and four hydrogens. There's a fun little surprise in this example. Pause the video and see if you can solve the molecular structure for this molecule. Here is the molecular structure for ethylene. Each hydrogen has one bond. Each carbon has two single bonds and one double bond, which adds up to four bonds for each carbon atom. The fun surprise here is that ethylene is built very similarly to ethane, but this double bond sort of kicks out two of the hydrogens because it limits the number of other atoms that the carbons can bond with. Let's look at a molecule called acetylene, C2H2. It has two carbons and just two hydrogens. Watch out, this one's a little tricky. Pause the video and see if you can solve the structure for acetylene. Here is the molecular structure for C2H2. Each hydrogen has one bond, and the carbons in the center share a triple bond. This means that for each carbon, the bonds add up to a total of four. I know this one looks a little strange, but for carbon and nitrogen, triple bonds are allowed as long as they satisfy our bonding rules. This next molecular formula is for a chemical called methylamine, CNH5. It has one carbon, one nitrogen, and five hydrogens. Pause the video and see if you can determine how this molecule is put together. Methylamine is built like this. This molecule also obeys our rules. Each hydrogen is bonded one time, the nitrogen has three bonds, and finally the carbon has four single bonds. Note that in more complex molecules, the hydrogen atoms are arrayed around the outside of the molecule, while higher bonding atoms, such as carbon and nitrogen, are more likely to be found bonded together near the molecule's middle area. Here is kind of a tricky one. This molecule is called an imine. Notice that its formula is very similar to the one we just looked at. It has one carbon, one nitrogen, but only three hydrogens. Pause the video and see if you can build the molecular structure for this chemical. This imine is built like this. Each hydrogen is bonded one time. The nitrogen has three bonds, a single bond and a double bond, and the carbon has four bonds, two single bonds and one double bond. This is the molecular formula for a chemical called carbonic acid, H2CO3. Pause the video and see if you can determine how this molecule is put together. Carbonic acid is built like this. This molecule also obeys our rules. Each hydrogen is bonded one time. Each oxygen has two bonds. These have single bonds, while this one has a double bond. Finally, the carbon has four bonds total. Here is a double, and here are two single bonds. As a last little bonus, Let's look at a situation that you may encounter from time to time when trying to determine the structure of a complex molecule. All of the examples we saw so far in this video had only one possible structure. However, sometimes that's not the case. Take this molecular formula for example, H6C2O. There are two ways to solve the molecular structure for this formula. Can you identify both solutions to this problem? Pause the video and see if you can find out which two molecular structures will satisfy all of our bonding rules. If you solved it correctly, you should have been able to identify both of the molecular structures for H6C2O. This one is known as ethanol. This one is called dimethyl ether, or sometimes just ether. In either case, all our bonding rules are satisfied. All hydrogens form one bond, all carbons form four bonds, and all oxygens form two bonds.
This is simply to illustrate that sometimes there's not just one molecular structure that will work. Sometimes more than one combination of bonds can be made with the same group of atoms. Let's review our goal to make sure that you met it. After watching this video, you should be able to predict how a molecule's atoms are arranged by interpreting its molecular formula. If you can't do that, go back and watch the parts of the video that you didn't understand. You can find the timestamps for each practice problem in the informational section of this video. Until next time, remember, you can learn anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.